Hey everybody, I'm Lance Koike, and in this video I want to give you kind of a minimalist guide to kitchenware. This is the, the absolute minimum amount of things that I think you should buy if you want to cook healthy, but not have too much clutter around your house. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about was a non-stick pan. I, I get a pretty big one because I cook a lot of food. Um, the, these things are great because you don't need a whole lot of oil to keep the food from sticking and they're a lot easier to clean. They're not great because they don't last very long even when you take care of them. It's very important to do two things when you're using them. One is to not use too much heat. Um, too much heat starts to loosen the, the non-stick particles off of the, the pan and then you start to get this damage that lasts forever. Um, these pans usually only stay pretty good for about six months. And then the other thing you need to not do is don't put anything steel on it because that stuff is much harder than the Teflon or the, the non-stick coating that's on it. So it damages it. It'll pull it right off. You, if, you like, if you like put a knife and you cut something directly on it, it, it the pan is totally ruined. Um, it just, it really snowballs after that and that, that cut really opens up more wounds afterwards. So first thing, non-stick pan. Second thing, if you're gonna take care of that non-stick pan is some sort of plastic or soft spoon. You could do a wooden thing too, but I, I, I feel like the plastic ones I really like for something like eggs, which I make every day. Um, this one's nice because it's gonna be softer than the Teflon here, or the non, I don't know if it's actually Teflon, the non-stick coating. Uh, so you're just gonna, I'm gonna use my low heat, I'm gonna stir my eggs a bunch, I'm gonna take it off the heat, stir them some more, and I can use this a lot on this pan, but still not damage it. So this is great, and it works well even for some other pans that you might use. For example, uh, I, this one's kind of not a must have, uh, but super useful. If you need to do something a little bit smaller, like this is a great size for uh, rice for you know one to even four people for a meal, uh, or you could cook beans or something in it. Um, this is a great size, especially good if it comes with the lid. So a pot, a small pot. Super important. A big skillet is also super important. Now, uh, you can get the rimmed up one like this, or you could get more of a traditional skillet where it's a little bit wider. I tend to like this more solely because it catches some of the splash. So I'm usually cooking with high heat on a steel, super hard, just like that other pot. They're steel, and they're not gonna warp too hard if I don't overheat them and if I don't cool them with water as soon as I'm done cooking with them, okay? So if I'm gonna take care of my skillets or my pots, I need to make sure that I'm not uh, forcing them through extremes of heat. They've gotta have time to resettle into their original shape. So just make sure that you're not pouring water at all or cold water especially onto this as soon as you're done cooking. If it's got a lot of stuff that's caked on, you can do that a little bit. You can put a little bit on there and then you can put it back on the pan or on the uh, stove here, heat it all up and it'll start to loosen those particles. It'll even create some kind of like a, a soup um, that might taste good. I guess I've never tried it, but uh, <laughs> it looks kind of gross. You're gonna, you sit it there and then you can just let it cool down with that water in there. That'll loosen the particles up, make cleaning a lot easier. Also, you can watch my cleaning video where I scrub this pan. Uh, so, that was, those are like, like great, super useful. The last super useful pots, pans category is a big pot. If you're gonna make something like a chili or a soup, you just, you need the volume somehow. Um, this is a good size. You're not gonna cook for 70 people <laughs> in something like this. Like this is not a great stock pot necessarily cause it's not huge. It's hard to get some of you know, like uh, a chicken carcass in here, uh, but it works. And this is more of an all purpose. Like if I'm only gonna buy one giant pot, it's gonna be something like this, about this size. I don't remember. It's, a, it's a, the same lid. It's a standard size for the stove and it's the same lid that works for my skillet. So standard large stuff. Uh, then if we're oven cooking, you can put one of the beauty thing, beautiful things of this, like I can sear some meat on here and then I can sear the other side and I don't want to overcook it and I don't want to get super tough, but I need the, uh, I don't want to, you know, burn the outsides. I want a, a nice sear, a nice cook, a nice flavor, but I don't want to burn it. So what do I do if I still need to cook it? Well, I just, I cook something on here, I get the sear and then I throw it in the oven. And then uh, the oven will kind of slowly heat. That allows the heat to kind of draw to the inside and fully cook whatever you're trying to eat. 
Speaking of oven, we've got a nice sheet pan here. I like, I mean, if you're only gonna, if you're being super minimalist, you're only gonna buy one, and I would probably buy the big one, so you could do a lot of uh, vegetable volume in bulk. These are pretty cheap though, and you'll, <laughs> you might even just get two uh, in the package, so um, that can be super useful if you're, especially if you're trying to like uh, prep food for the week. Super useful, roasting vegetables. Um, last thing that I have over here, not the last thing in general, uh, a cutting board. Now it's gotta be wood or plastic because we're gonna talk about our knives here in a second, but we wanna keep them sharp. We wanna take care of them. If you cut on marble or glass, the marble, it's just like the nonstick pan, right? The marble or the glass is harder than the fragile edge of the knife. And so it really dulls the knife and it can even like chip it away. So if you're gonna if you're gonna be super minimalist about this, you're only gonna buy one real chef's knife, and we're gonna have to take care of it. So this is step number one of taking care of it. This would probably be my my pick for you. We have this OXO, I think it's Good Grips uh, cutting board as well. This one's super good. It's very light. Uh, it's plastic. If you don't, if you don't mind the plastic look or whatever, then that works. We have this other one that you can see behind here. That's wood. It's super thick, super heavy, and kind of hard to clean. It's great if I'm doing really high volume work, but if I'm only gonna have one cutting board, you're gonna want it to be this size. So this is about uh, I don't know, 17 inches, I think, uh, diagonally. Maybe it's 11 by 17. I'm not totally sure. Next. Shears, let's say shears. So some sort of scissors that you dedicate to uh, food products and snipping stuff. Um, you just, you don't wanna cross contaminate your, you know, your <laughs> letters that you're sending or opening or whatever. Um, so having a dedicated pair is great. These are super expensive, but they're like the best thing that I've ever purchased. So if you're trying to be frugal about it, don't get this, but these are shun uh, kitchen shears and they came in a set. Oh, I'll actually show you the other one. Uh, there's another, this is a uh, smaller, a little bit more, uh, uh, you know, the fine tuned work. This is good for herb stuff. There's a little herb strainer thing there. Uh, but the big pair is going to do the bulk of your work. And it's even got this little boning crunch uh, thing. If you are not not insane and you don't want to spend, it's even got a, a screwdriver on the back end here, like a flathead screwdriver. How crazy is that? Uh, if you're not insane and you don't want to spend $130 on kitchen shears, uh, one, I don't blame you at all. Just get some generic kitchen shears, okay? Doesn't have to be too crazy. Next. Now, let's save the knives for last. So, uh, cooking utensil thing. So I mentioned the, uh, uh, it's right over here, this plastic spoon. This is good for not damaging stuff. This skillet thing has a plastic rim. That's also good. If I need to, you know, a skillet to flip stuff, this is, this is actually pretty good because it's not going to damage your pans. Even not just the non-stick ones, but the steel ones, they can be damaged too. And they're just not going to last as long. So you want to take care of them. Um, other things, wood is softer, so I can use this as well. Now, the issue with these things is one, this one, it's got this, this rim of the plastic and food gets stuck in there. It's really hard to clean. I don't use this very often, um, but if I, I, I just avoid having a skillet. So if you don't, or uh, what, what is this called? I just avoid having a flipper, whatever they call this. Um, <laughs> spatula, there we go. Um, so I don't really use a spatula very often. If you feel you need one, get one like this though. I use the spoon the most, the plastic spoon the most, but if I need to brown meat, this spoon will just collapse because it's super plasticky and it bends. Um, so it doesn't work for something like that. It's great for my eggs, um, but if I need to put some oomph into my pan or into my food, this wooden one works super well. They're not gonna last forever, but it's holding up pretty well, even though it's you know been exposed to all the heat. Uh, I haven't burnt it too bad, um, and all the liquids, you know, they kind of get in there. You can put some oil on this to kind of keep it together. I do that with a cutting board. That's a good way to keep your cutting board lasting a pretty long time. Um, and then last, let's talk about knives. So you really only need one knife, um, I'm going to talk about four different knives that I've tried. Um, let's do this. So first you need, 
You don't need a small one if you're careful, um, but something like this is super great to have. This was like $5 on Amazon. It's a Victorinox knife. Um, they make some really sharp metal. Uh, it feels kind of cheap, and but you know it is cheap and it performs super well. So. I would just get, if you only need one tiny knife, even uh, you know you and your spouse can share a knife, like that's, that's pretty minimalist. You could get one like this. Um, we also got a set of four of these, they're like steak knives from Victorinox. I think they were about $25, and they're a bunch of different colors, which is super fun. They don't look, you know, they don't look like the nicest knives in the world, but they are sharp and they're serrated, so it can help you get through some tougher stuff. Um, problem with serrated stuff is it doesn't sharpen very well so for high use primary knives like it once this is dull you're probably just going to throw it away um, which is why we've got this big boy over here but let's first talk about this so I need one major this is kind of like the biggest thing I need one major knife for preparing vegetables um, generally, it's going to be something like this. You could do a Santoku style too, which is a little bit uh, more rectangular. But I like the chef's knife because I can rock when I'm cutting and I can pull when I'm cutting. I don't have to just do this kind of chopping motion. And then I don't push the blade so hard into the cutting board. Blade stays sharp a little bit longer. This is a Victorinox brand. Again, I think this was like 30 bucks maybe. Um, this is super sharp and works really well. If you're gonna buy, so again, our whole idea here, minimalist. If you're gonna buy only one knife, you need it to be sharp. It sounds dangerous to have a sharp knife because then it can cut right through your finger, uh, but it's actually safer because once you learn how to use the knife, now when it's sharp, you can rely on it to do what you're expecting it to do instead of getting caught on something and then slipping off, which is, uh, what happened because I let my uh, <laughs> my brain wander and I let my knife get dull. So keep them sharp um, and then you won't cut your nail. Uh, so the Victorinox one is a huge recommendation. I'll put that in the description below along with the other stuff that I can find here. If you are not trying to be frugal and you want a knife that's going to last forever, I would get something like this. So I like the Shun style, the um, S-H-U-N. This is the Shun Classic 8-inch chef's knife. Um, I had a 7-inch one that I tried and I <laughs> gave it to my <laughs> parents and then I bought a new one. Or I had them buy me a new one. <laughs> um, this works super well. 8-inch is a really good size. If you're a giant, you can get the 10. Um, if you're pretty petite, you might actually like the seven inch more. I know my mom likes the seven inch more actually. Um, big things are, again, it's this hardness scale. So we're cutting on a wood or a plastic board and that's still gonna round over the edge. It's not gonna be super sharp. And so you'll see people with these sticks of steel, they're honing steels. They'll recommend that you get one of those to keep the, the blade oriented towards where you're cutting so it, it it doesn't actually sharpen it because when you sharpen stuff, it takes the steel away. But what it does is it just hones the blade so that, you know, when you sharpen something, it makes this little triangle shape. And when you use it, it starts to bend over and it doesn't cut direct, straight through stuff quite as well. So the honing steel just keeps it into that nice point. It does make it sharper. Um, it is worth probably getting if you're going to invest in the knife like this. Uh, that knife's about $100. The honing steel is something similar so what it's got is it's got this little cutout on the base at the base of the handle here and all you do is you line up the dull part of the blade the top part of the blade onto the uh, um, this cutout part of the base of the steel and then I just try to keep it there and I'm pulling the blade along that once you can maintain that angle, this is telling you, hey, we sharpen our knives at this angle. This is the angle that you want your, uh, the tip of the blade to be pointing towards, right? So just do something like that. Doesn't need a whole lot of pressure. Hard part for me is going the other way. So I have to flip this over, do the same thing on the other side. 
this is like the awkward way to do it. If you're super good, <laughs> you do it nice and fast. And then you'll notice on the steel, it's got these rough edges and then it's got these soft edges. So this is to get your angle. If I need more honing from this steel, I will then get my angle and then I'll rotate to a rough edge and then I'll pull it along. And this just helps keep the knife nice and sharp from day to day use. I like to do it before, um, before I'm gonna use it at night, you know, for prepping dinner or whatever. Um, and then don't be afraid to get it sharpened. Like when you, when you get it sharpened, it takes some of the steel away so that you're using up some of the life of it, but it's gonna last forever. Um, so if you wanna make the investment, I would say do the shun. You, I mean, you really don't need another knife. Uh, the chef's knife works super well, and then you just get these tiny ones for personal use, uh, like, you know, on your plate or whatever. Right, so it, there's a good example. Something like this, I got these because I'm not afraid to throw them away. They're super cheap. Um, and uh, I know that I'm gonna be cutting on our glass plates, our ceramic plates. Um, so it's gonna dull this knife. I don't, I'm not gonna pass this around and I'm not gonna pre-cut everybody's food every time. So I'm gonna just use something cheap and we just, we use it and then we try to be nice about it. Um, the other way to keep your knives nice and sharp is if you can, you put the tip down and then you pull through the food instead of pushing down and uh, compressing the blade onto the cutting surface. And then I, you'll see I store it in this cardboard thing. They, uh, Sir Latab uh, sharpened this knife for me and then they put it in this. And I was just like, well, uh, that seems like a good idea to keep it in there. The other thing that I have is just a shelf here for the knife. So everything has a home and it all knows where to go. That's our, our bare minimum though. Like if it, it's gonna be a couple hundred bucks depending on what you do. Uh, what you get pots and pans like if you get a whole set of stuff that's where you're spending most of your money so if you can get just the pieces it might make sense um, or if you know you might just spend 50 more bucks and get a bunch of other pots that will you know it'll come with a steamer or whatever and that will make things easier on you um, so do your own pricing price price stuff out but this is the stuff that i like this is the stuff that i use pretty much every day and this is the stuff that i'd recommend if you want to get as little as possible but still start to cook your own food and take control of your health thanks for watching if you learned something hit the like button and subscribe to be notified when i release new videos if you need something else to watch uh, i've got a mobility circuit uh, playlist that's Got a bunch of follow along videos where we just go through some exercises that kind of loosen your body up. Or, if, you know, if you want more cooking type stuff, check out that playlist.